today, guys. Again, using this awesome little guy, kind of a short bore brush, the C5 Torga, using premium bore bristles from Samoog. I've had it in the had them in the water for a few minutes. Put them back in there. The new guy is this open comb from uh, Razor Rock. The open comb for the game changer. We're gonna put inside of it my venerable Nasset. 248 uses, I believe, is gonna be the the count because we've got a two seven count right there and here is the, the blade we've got the three dots tiny scribbles to the left of the X we'll put that in but I want to show you a couple things about the razor first it's my first experience with the game changer open comb in either of the gaps I assume they make it for the 84 or 85 gap as well as the 68 now this is a tfs soap shong fung sing is what tfs stands for as you can see there linea intenso or the intense line and it is hilarious if you have never heard about this before that a very Chinese name is a part of an Italian soap making tradition. As far as I know, and they'll tell you the story on the Italian barber site uh, uh, or somewhere where, uh, you know, the, the Chinese guy comes over to Italy and starts making, uh, brings like a soap tradition kind of with him, starts making soaps in Italy, goes through generations, his kids and all this kind of stuff, and so it's an Italian soap, you know, but started by this Chinese guy, right? So people just say TFS, and it's a good base. Uh, I tried Crazy Sandalwood a um, couple of, uh, a year or two ago, and it's very nice. It's a good soap. Now, this one was provided on loan to me, free of charge. In, if you can read the, uh, they didn't exactly make the title of this guy super legible. Mandarino Takibana. And so what it is, is a whole bunch of different citrus types, like some Mandarin Orange, some Citrus Nobilis. I don't know what that is. That's in the middle range of the note spectrum. And then the base is... Uh, another Mandarin, I think it was, was it Egyptian Mandarin, something else. And then also in the top note, in the very first, what you in general should smell at first, in addition to the Mandarin orange, you're going to get a little bit of pineapple. Now that I can pick up as I smell the, the soap here. Now the site says it's triple milled and it's the newest base from TFS. Triple milled. It looks like a standard crope in terms of appearance. Now, maybe it's been milled and a lot of the water has been removed. And so maybe that's what they're talking about. And so maybe what we're looking at is maybe just a little bit of air churned into it or, you know, something like that. I don't know. But the price, I believe, was only about $14. And so I don't really care if it's triple milled or not. That's a good price for a crope. Now the uh, it's not the packaging here the uh, pla plastic here is not super strong it does flex uh, which I don't really mind because it's not like I want these things to you know be the foundation of a home and uh, but when you screw them together they hold together nicely and they they uh, bind on each other and help to support each other and so it feels pretty solid when it's connected it's nothing like a, a Taylor of Old Bond Street cream tub they may have an inferior cream when compared to cropes and hard soaps but those tubs are terrifically well built maybe that's what we're paying for right well i definitely get the pineapple and i get the citrus that mandarin orange i get the mandarin orange right away the pineapple i didn't know the description and i thought man something's in there it's kind of tweaking the orange a little bit uh, almost muting it uh, softening it up just a little bit. And then I read the description and saw that it was the pineapple. 
I don't know what the Citrus Nobilis is. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to I'll be, I'll try to pick it up. Uh, it says Linnea Intenso, but this doesn't really smell any more powerful. Uh, you know, Intense Line is what that means. This doesn't really smell more powerful than any other crope like Sterling or something like that. All right, so that's the gear for today's shave. Let's look at the special guest of the evening. This is the open comb version of the Game Changer. So they came out with a solid bar first. They came out with the 68 gap. I thought, that looks pretty cool. Let's try it out. I got it. It's too mild for me. I tried nine different blades and six of them were ineffectual. They just gave you, they didn't cut well enough. And three of them worked okay. So the 68 plate was kind of at the bottom of my usage range. If my usage range is, is let me see if I can get it all in the video, is here, then down here with a few blades in my zone is my, my uh, is the game changer. Okay, the 68 gap. Now, I got the 84 gap, much better. My range is here. It's, it's, it's somewhere in the middle. Wonderful. Any blade I put in it pretty much works great. Now, since the 68 is kind of partially in and partially out of my range to be able to be effective enough, I wonder if the addition, if the only thing they changed was the open comb versus solid bar, most of the time, all other things being equal, adding it to be an open comb will turn it into something that's just a little more aggressive. Now that's cool, probably, because if it's part in and part out of my range, if we bump it up in aggression just a little bit, that might put all of it in my range. So I'm very curious how this guy ends up. Okay, so there's the, there's the deal. Let me show you the bottom. Made in Canada, got a serial number. And there you can say GC, there you can see, GCOC68 for the open comb. This is not the Jaws. I think if I were to have one of these, I'd get this kind and not the Jaws. Workmanship as usual for the Game Changer components. Looks great. Stainless steel. Very nice manufacturing. So now let's look at the base plate. As it touches the top cap. Now look, we've got that top cap overhanging a little bit. As you can see when I have it upside down. But look at the combs. If you follow the comb, pick a comb, follow it toward the head, you'll see it start to turn up and touch the bottom lip of the top cap. So you know what that means? We've got, that means we have a solid connection, a grabbing, a pinching on the blade that's going to be really close to the edge, and we've got that for every tooth along. And so I think that's going to be a very solid, firm hold on the blade. It's one of my favorite attributes to look for in a razor. So that could totally transform how I enjoy the 68 by having it in this open comb. Let me show you the difference between the 68 and the solid bar. So here's the solid bar. Now it's still a pretty firm hold because you see right there, there's that step up. In the middle of the blade, there's a step up right there. And of course we have this the step ups, the supports here on the end. But if we didn't have that guy in the middle, I don't think he'd be nearly as comfortable. And now I'll hold this upside down like I did before. Look at that overhang where we're not getting bottom support anywhere except for middle and the end. So that's to let you compare the support from the base plate the solid bar versus the base plate that's open comb. Here, let's look at them side by side. See how much more of this beveled area you see with the open comb? That's support underneath the blade. Keep that vibration down. Keep the feel smoother. It also means a little bit less 
noise because less vibration equals less noise. And so if you're a person, and that's okay, if you're a person who likes the sound, if you like that audio feedback, sometimes we call it, then it, I'll bet this might, the open comb here might not be as, as fun for you. But for me, I like it quiet, I like it smooth, I like it consistent and controlled. And so let's see if the open comb delivers that. So, normally when I'm shaving, I just put the blade on randomly. With this one, this long life Nasset, I decided from day one to always put the dots. At that time, it would have been just the X. Always put the dots toward the handle. So, I'm going to put the dots face down because this is a base plate, of course, that has the studs on the base plate instead of the top cap. So we'll take our top cap. This is the radio knob handle. I think it's pretty neat. I have no idea. This could possibly be too mild. Alignment looks great. This could possibly be too mild for this old blade. But I'm on a trek to use this Nasset uh, every day until the end of June. Near the end of June, the day before the end, I will, if successful, if I can go that far, hit 300 uses with this blade. And I think that's just pretty nuts. All right, so let's take a look at that blade edge now. And so you can see it definitely overhangs the, the open comb here. The combs, the tines do come under it, and there's some gap. But not very far in, it's going to be gripping that blade. All right, I've got, we've, <laughs> I've got plenty of time now for my uh, bore brush to soak, so he's definitely in good shape. Water splash on the face now. Cool water tonight. A little dip in temperature today. Water out of the goatee. Uh, that was just kind of my pre-shave routine, which is very simple. Um, let us. This is new. Why don't we try a 45 second load, which is probably going to be excessive, but why not? This little boar is, is still young, but he does have enough splay. He does seem to be doing good with lathers lately. So 45 second load. Ah, there's 50 right there. So we'll go to the 35 mark. And this pretty quickly got wet and foamy. Yeah, the orange is just jumping up at me, coming to my nose from this distance. I like the scent a lot. It's a, it's a sweet orange, but the pineapple is balancing it a little bit. It's definitely not a, uh, not too close to a candy type sweet orange. It's just a, uh, enjoyable orange scent to me. All right. About five more seconds. I bet we have tons of soap loaded on this brush. There we go. rinse off the, the tub. Now here, uh, before I forget, let me tell you the coolness here. These items were provided for me for free. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, on loan and uh, from a viewer, Gabe. And he messaged me and he already has the open comb for the 68 Gap. He likes it a lot. And he decided to ask me if, uh, because he wanted to buy a backup. And he said, hey, since I've already got one, when I get it, I'm just going to let it sit on the shelf until, you know, that way if I ever lose the first one, I have a backup because I enjoy it so much. Do you want to try out the base plate? I'm sure he's seen me do some uh, reviews on the Game Changer. You may have noticed that I didn't really like the 68, because I did, but I do like the 84. And you may have noticed that I didn't really, uh, I didn't have anything in the open comb for either base, either uh, base plate. 
either gal. And so that's very generous of him. So he placed an order and had the order shipped to me. And so when I'm done evaling and uh, putting it through its paces, I'll send it to him. Very generous to let me try this stuff out. Now, look what's going on. You see the dryness here? I hope you're not using a lather like this. Of course, if you like a lather like this, then use it. Let's put that caveat in there. But this is really dry. This isn't anywhere near a slick, crazy, awesome lather yet. If you've watched many of my videos, you already know where we're going with this. We are going to add some water. And this guy's going to be excellent. Okay. The scent is definitely coming up to my nose. I'm able to enjoy it even now. And it's a, it's a very authentic, uh, very, I do feel like maybe I've had some mandarin oranges around somewhere and they've, I, I've burst them and they've kind of thrown up a little bit of their, you know, juice. You know how when you uh, pull apart a mandarin orange, sometimes something comes apart and you get little spr sprinkles in different places. Well, it's a pretty good scent. Not too much interfering with the uh, citrus, with the orange type scent that's in here. Now I'm, I'm picking up something else. Maybe it's that. Other citrus. Um, I, I said it in the beginning, but I forgot it by now. My computer's not acting right now. It's acting well. And so I, I wasn't really able to kind of construct my notes and stuff. As usual. So that is an excessive amount of loading for a crope. Let's just see how many lather passes we end up getting by the end. Doing pretty good. Now look at that guy shaking. He's holding himself up, so that means he's kind of got some structure to him. He probably needs more water, so I'm going to oblige. So we've got two teaspoons of water already in it. Now we have three. So I don't know that this is going to be a triple milled soap experience in the tradition of tobacco or fine or Mitchell's wool fat, um, you know, those guys. Quad milled, PDP. So I don't think it's going to be quite like that, but it, it's um, looking like it's going to be a good lather. The scent sure is nice. I can't really describe what, what the scent is now. It's almost like it's uh, muted a little bit into what it almost smells like is a little bit of resinous, uh, almost like the stalks of, of, of an orange, uh, if they were to be kind of broken open to let their, their juices kind of waft around a little bit. And so it's a muted type of uh, citrus scent that's, that's what I'm getting right now when I stick my nose in. So those top notes of mandarin and pineapple have kind of done their job and left uh, to some degree. So we're getting there now. We've got three teaspoons in it. Now it's starting to look like a little better lather. Still supporting himself pretty well. Look at that big ribbon of Suds. Now we've got some right here looking. Oh, that's got some nice slickness to it. That's very slick. Just use it kind of as a soap to break up some of the oils on my face. Sometimes I do this, not always. It's 
instead of having it go down the drain. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a whole teaspoon. So now we've got four in there. Hopefully that's not too much. But the, the structure that it was showing me just now made me think that maybe it could take a whole teaspoon. Uh, one of the, some of the motions I do, I push it all the way down in and make it splay just a little bit, and then I just do normal circles. So that's one. Very simple. Then another motion, I'll lift it up. Because that first one where I'm I'm splaying doesn't really let sometimes the the lather stay along the bottom, but if I just lift up and where it's not really at this point I can do that because it's almost like I'm stirring a liquid. It's very creamy, very fluid. I can lift it up and that way it keeps some of the lather on the floor of the bowl. And so you get a different kind of mixing when you do that. Of course you can go back and back and forth like that with this kind of bowl it's very productive but then most importantly is uh, one that I believe helps to recycle or to uh, cycle the lather through the brush is the plunge down and when I get to the bottom I stop I'm it's not I'm not mashing I'm not the the splay of the brush is only slightly enlarging uh, and so the purpose of that is to take whatever soap is uh, coming underneath of the brush and kind of shoving it up into the bristles and then what's in the bristles might come out the side or, or just leave in some other way. And then we can equalize the soap and water that's inside the brush with the lather that's on the outside of the brush that's in the bowl. This is a lot of lather. So uh, now we'll bring the lather kind of to the bottom of the bowl here and lift half of it out. We can just watch it. Pretty much, he's holding himself up pretty well, but he does give way eventually. Now let's push this lather even further. Okay, let's, oh yeah, we still got excellent slickness. I'm starting to feel it's a little bit less creamy than what I sampled just a minute ago. My instinct tells me that this lather might be perfect the way it is. I might have to leave it a little drier than I usually do. But the slickness is really nice. I think I'm going to be really happy. And I think whenever I send this soap to, to Gabe, he's going to be really happy as well with the, with the lather. I mean, it's not going to be like fine or something like that. but uh, Or tobacco. But those guys are just crazy, uh, crazy good in the performance department. Five teaspoons now. but I think he's going to enjoy the, the slickness of this one. And uh, you could keep it dry, drier. Maybe stop how I stopped just a, a minute ago and just not put any more water in it. Or you can, looks like it's going to hold water nicely so that you could push it with hydration and get something really wet and slick. Got tons of lather in this bowl here. Okay, so we added a teaspoon from that sample we showed you last. So let's pull up half of the, ah, look at that. There we go. Look at that. And he is just going to fall. He supported himself just a little bit. And then he collapsed. So we have got, you can, you can see the way, it, look at the way it moves around. Very liquidous if that's a word at all. So those are some things to look for as you find out where you like to have your lather. Maybe you don't like yours quite the same as me. What am I smelling right now? Can't identify it. Kind of nice. It's very natural. Uh, you know, it's probably uh, maybe like a, a woody kind of citrus that doesn't have a whole lot of sweetness to it but it does have kind of kind of an essence of uh, citrus but then definitely kind of a, a woody type note to it would be my guess all right splash face with water uh, 
Okay. So we'll see what happens when you push this push this lather with a bunch of water. See if he can take more or if he's happy right here. Well, look at that. That's a good sign. You know what that means? See, it's getting creamy. It's not dissipating. It's getting creamier, actually. And so that means it looks like we could even shove some more water into that lather if we wanted. We'll just keep him right here for now. Just work him into the skin. I want to give some time for that lather to kind of bond. Soak itself into the top layers of your skin to it just it's just a hunch of mine it just seems to protect a little better when you do that well i've got hard water and as you can see this lather is looking very nice even with hard water this is a really good lather yeah i, I wasn't encouraged when i saw the surface of the soap you know it just kind of looked like these the other razor rock soaps like uh like uh gold and double x and triple x and um you know that whole normal base that, of the razor rock stuff uh is just not all that good of a soap when compared to so many of the other ones that we have out now but this is different this it uh, it may look like that from the start but this is a nice lather. And so, yeah, you, this is a very adult orange. Because you're getting some other, it's not feminine. You're getting some other stuff in there. You get that nice, sweet kind of orange in the beginning with a hint of the, the touch of the pineapple. So I think this is well designed. And now... This lather, it could definitely use some more water if I felt like doing that. All right, man, good shape. Nice. Now, here we go with the open comb. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Gabe, for giving me the chance to try these guys out. Of course, if it doesn't work very well, can't blame it on the razor yet because I haven't tried it in kind of a normal scenario. This is a razor blade that's had a way more uses than your average person is going to put through it. Tell you what, I am getting a light bit of tugging. It's very light. Seems like it's cutting very well. So far, I'm a fan. I can't wait until the end of June or after June where I'll be able to I'll look forward to putting this razor through several different blades. See how he acts. Well, that's a very positive first time there. I think a little bit of that pineapple is still hanging out. It's adding some neat stuff to the scent. I'm going to rinse. This lather, lather seems pretty easy to rinse away. It doesn't stick on you too much. Brush is doing great. No scritch or anything like that. Comfortable. But you're definitely feeling the backbone of the of all that, all those bristles. And they're short. So they don't have as much room to flex and so that's kind of one of the things that gives them that backbone I don't need to scrub like this but I, I like to work the brush some help the tips to split more just kind of feel it all right yeah I got so much lather in that bowl Lather for 45 seconds. It looks like maybe next time I just need to lather for about uh, load, is what I should say. Load for more like 20 seconds.
live and learn but you know i wanted to overshoot plus this little boar brush i wasn't sure sometimes it's been eating some lathers i think it's out of that phase now but just to be safe i'm doing it a little bit more than usual i did feel some stubble as i was doing that last rinse but wasn't a whole lot and i'm confident it's going to be taken care of Many people say falling water on your razor when you want to clear it should be all it takes. Gravity falling water instead of you having to do a, a jet stream should dislodge and clear away any lather that you've got on your razor. If it doesn't, that might be a sign that you need to add more water to your lather. That's one standard. I mean, maybe you like it super thick. That's one thing, but just let you know. You might want to try that. Add a little bit of water next time. Yeah, I like the feel of this uh, lather on my face. It's an odd name for a soap. Odd brand name. Third pass. I did feel just a little bit of stubble on that rinse for the second pass but it is it is reducing and it might even be done by the end of the third pass third pass might be just you know having to do a little bit more duty than it did in the with a normal blade might be uh, not quite I might have a little bit more tips to take out The little saddle here on the handle right there where my thumb is see this is very slippery but that little saddle helps you to grip it even though it's a very slippery resin handle with suds on it and it's not it doesn't feel like it's a whole lot of extra effort to keep your grip there which is good all right cross grain again i almost do the same exact pass for for two and three, with the exception of my trouble spot area, I, I will uh, I'll change the direction in that. But everywhere else is generally the same thing. Keeping the right angle on this seems pretty intuitive. I do buff, which means I do shorter strokes that kind of hit the same area a couple different times. And then that lets me adjust my angle kind of on the fly to make sure I'm always on point. This is the change in direction that's the only difference between two and three for me. It's cross grain just in the other direction. This lather feels really good. Smooth. I think I will end up doing a touch-up pass right there. I'll tell you, if this old nasset that's all smoothed out works well with the 68 open comb, that, that tells you something. Rinse. Now there is a good bit of stubble in this vicinity that still needs to be cut. Whether that's the 68 gap being a little too mild, or whether that's the old Nasset, we won't know. And I've probably got five, six more passes of soap in that bowl. Comfort is very nice. A little bit of blade feel, so it's not super smooth. So it's, it's not as comfortable as the solid bar. But I don't mind that because... Well, good is comfort if it doesn't quite give you the close enough cut that you need. 
and that's kind of how the solid bar treats me. So, I like the open comb so far. I like the feel of it. There's still a good many hairs that have some length to them, so it's not working any miracles with the Nasset, but that's an old smoothed out blade. Looking forward to trying this open comb with some other younger blades, a fresh Nasset. I think it'll, it'll be fun to try. And the, the scent here is wonderful. It's all around me, uh, six out of 10. I really enjoy that type of scent strength and it's a, it's a smooth scent. So it's very conducive to uh, use right before you go to bed, just when you want to chill out. It's not very punchy, it's not bitter. It's not a, there are some orange uh, parts that have a little bit of zest and bitter to them. Those don't seem to be what's used in this particular scent here. So it's a smooth, sweet orange scent and that pineapple twist to it, uh, I like. It adds a little bit of difference. It keeps it from being plain orange and then that, that kind of resinous scent or whatever it was, that is kind of sticking around still a little bit. Oh, you know what I bet that is? I bet that's that, that's that kind of woody, a woody kind of orange thing with a, that touch of pineapple still, still hanging around. That's my guess. That's what it seems like. All right. Do a full rinse now. Now, though there are some tips around here, I will say that this is an acceptable shave. Most of the jobs that I know of are not going to have a problem with this length of the stubble. It's in many cases it's been cut flush, but in a few it's 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 noticeable. And so, yeah, high profile job where you've got to be crisp. It's not going to be good enough. But it is an odd scenario since we're dealing with such an old blade. So now just two more uses and we will be sitting at 250. That is crazy. That is nuts. All right, guess what? It's lather examination time. So let's take a look at what was in the, the brush. Pretty good stuff. Looks well hydrated. Now let's just scoop out this whole big old handful that was in the bowl like i said you know five passes something like that there's just tons it's got a light feel to it it's like feathery as you try to move it around you know kind of without making contact of your skin it uh, definitely has a luxurious feel now, as we move in and kind of have contact it's a it is a thin you know soapy kind of feeling for that for that slickness it's not a tallow, buttery kind or, um, or fatty kind of, of slickness. But we did hydrate this a lot. I, I definitely felt a more luxurious, creamy kind of feel back two teaspoons of water ago or something like that. But this guy is well hydrated. Let's get him all onto my fingertips and then kind of pull him apart. Look at his weight pull down like that. Yeah. So look at that big old section right there. Yep. So there are a few soaps that may have a lather that have a lathers that you know perform a little bit better than than this, but this is a great lather. This is very nice. Um, the slickness is uh, is there, and it's going to protect you. Cushion, not a whole lot. I'd say medium. If that matters to you, I, I don't think, I don't know how, it, it, how, I don't know what shaving attributes cushion is going to, you know, help you with. That's a very interesting scent at the end of the shave here. It might be a little bit of an acquired taste. It almost, yeah, yeah, like the, the white rind of the orange. Sometimes that's kind of pleasant. Sometimes it's kind of not. I think it's a very interesting soap. I would not mind shaving with this on a regular basis. I mean, it's just good stuff. 
Got a nice scent. And it transitions a couple of times during the shave. So it can kind of carry your interest a little bit. Keeps it for me monochromatic. I don't need to rinse myself off. I've already done that. My face. Just need to clear my hands. Let's see what I have down in the aftershave department for something orange. Uh, with, with an orange, I love to pair a woody kind of scent. Oh, sound of wood. I mean, orange is so versatile. I didn't know how many ways we, I would see orange used in the shaving world until I had been af in, in it for a little while. Um, so the sandalwood, no doubt, is going to work well with it. Something zesty, something soapy is going to work well with it too. Something warm and spicy will also work well with it. Very versatile. So this is sandalwood from Lather and Wood. It is a balm I got long ago from Amazon in the early days before I found out about shaving forums and things like that. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing, even on my cheeks, some area that areas that kind of need improvement. And so this is not going to be a really efficient shaver with this old NASA. Hey, um, just recently posted a page on my website. In the description, there'll be a link to that website. Uh, and it is uh, a page about, marath I call it Marathon Secrets. If you um, want to know what I think might be the things that are helping me, I've discussed them on my videos. And so if you're a regular watcher, you've pretty much heard everything. But I, I want to use that website because sometimes I forget to say a few things. So if I always point people to it, I might say a few uh, summary items, but then I can always point somebody to that for the full breadth of knowledge. I've got a section of things that I, I kind of believe are what's helping me. The two biggest things, wet lathers and a light touch with the razor. And there's a section of, these are things that I'm just guessing about. These are things that I do. I see it seems logical that it might be helping me extend the blade life, but I don't know for sure. And so there's a section for that. Things I don't do, there's a section for that. Like I don't strop the blade on a towel or a, a my forearm or a palm or jeans or anything. I don't sharpen the blade in any way. I don't wipe the blade. Just some, some things that I don't do. Uh, there's a question section with a couple of questions in there right now. No doubt uh, we'll come up with some questions to add and, and make it a, a good resource, even better resource with some good information, more, more good information. Uh, and then there's another section of caveats like uh, like my oily skin. I do have naturally oily skin and then I do wear a goatee, you know, so that reduces the square footage of my face. Now, it's not a goatee that really comes in my down my chin very much. And so there is still lots of skin underneath there. Yeah, that balm still is working pretty good. It's a great scent to pair with this. Really, really nice. So if you are interested in, uh, in, in knowing some of my ideas about why I'm able to get such long blade life, then, uh, then head over to sugardaddyshaves.com. And uh, it's all one word. Um, and I do have the vowels in the Sugar Daddy. My YouTube username does not have the vowels in the Sugar Daddy. But the, uh, the website does. And there's no sp space, of course. There's no underscore. So sugardaddyshaves.com. And then there'll be a, in the menu there, there'll be Marathon Blades where you can read uh, the list. See the list of blades that I know of that somebody has taken to 100. And one of the main things it proves is that it's not a specific blade because most of the popular blades are in that list. It's not the blade, it's the shaver. It's the shaver. And then there's a marathon secrets and that's the one I was just talking to you about. So if you think that you might enjoy that read, jump on there and check it out. There's no ads or anything like that. I doubt I'll ever put any on but at least there's none right now. I'm not, I'm not trying to use it to market or anything like that. I'm not selling products. There's a popular wet shaver out there that, you know, helped me a lot in the beginning, but most of his videos, it just seems like he's kind of hawking his products the whole time. It just takes a little bit away from his kind of believability, authenticity, trustworthiness, that sort of thing. 
Anybody remember the Calvin and Hobbes comic book? I read in maybe the last book that he wrote, he wrote a preface section that talked about a lot of his... Bill Watterson's the author of the Calvin Hobbes comic. He answered a lot of questions that he... I guess because he knew it was the last one, he wanted to help people out and answer some of their questions. Probably got tired of being asked them or that sort of thing. And one of them was, uh, I met probably something about has Calvin and Hobbes ever been approached by for sponsorship to, uh, you know, sponsor a certain product or something like that. And he, his answer basically said that if you sponsor a product, then that changes the authenticity and the, the trustworthiness of your characters. Because now the reader doesn't know if they're promoting something uh, or being themselves, being real, trying to put forth a real message. And that was the first time, and I, I heard that, I don't know, when I was 12, I can't remember when I heard that the first time, but that was the first time I'd ever really heard that kind of a message. And uh, and that, that, was very, uh, that was very wise. Because it, it is true. And the first time anybody starts uh, trying to promote a product or when you know they're being paid to promote a product. Now you don't know about their motivations. All right. This guy is... I use a lot of Samogs. I am not paid by Samog. Uh, I use a lot of Samogs from most of the other ones. Most of the other ones are thinner. They don't have a thick knot like this one. And they're longer. And so they're softer, but they have more flow through. They're more comfortable in the face, but they don't offer as much scrub. And so, I think there are a lot of people who don't like Samogs because Samog hasn't really brought around a brush like this, and now they have. C5 Torga in Premium Boar Bristle. They've also got this same brush in, I think, Silver Tip, Horse, Synthetic, Finest Badger, you know, a whole bunch of options. Nice, the handle feels heavy and chunky, so I like it. I like it a lot. Well, that was five teaspoons of water, I believe. I don't think it's seven. I think it was just five. That was a 45 second load and it ended up to be way too much. 20 seconds might be what I might start with next time. <clears throat> so we can definitely bring down the ratio. Well, that was a good shave. And the sandalwood is mixing really well. I'm still smelling some of the the orange components floating around is working really well with the sandalwood. All right, well, I'm definitely, like I said, looking forward to trying this guy out, trying this open comb out. Uh, I might use him again with the um, with the Nasset, with the old Nasset. Uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to uh, July when I'll be able to uh, put him forth, put him through some good paces with a bunch of other blades, see how he acts. All right. Um, soap was wonderful. And to be honest, it looks like very little was removed from the surface. And so that tells me that, yeah, this could very well be triple milled. It may look like a crope, but you're not pulling as much product off of the surface of the soap. And so maybe we're talking about a nice long, long life on uh, giving you lots of shaves with this one as opposed to a a normal crope, like the, the razor rock kind. So, very cool. He, uh, Gabe, thank you so much. I'm thoroughly enjoying. I'm going to use this uh, soap again, definitely. The other soap was a, uh, what did it say, bergamot, neroli, something like that. And I believe both of those words are uh, represent orange family again, like the mandarin. Um, I think one of them may be the blossom of the orange tree or an orange tree, a type of citrus tree, and maybe the other one is the, the woody nature to it. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. I did a sniff uh, from the tub, and it was very interesting and enjoyable. So I think that's going to be a win also. Uh, just enjoying the brush. It's going to get softer and softer as the tips split. I tell you, tell you there's a couple of outliers uh, bristles where the tips have already split to maybe half an inch. Uh, it's rare, but uh, but there are a couple of those. So it is it is splitting with each use. All right, guys. Well, there we go. There we go. 
sure hope there was something in this shave that's going to help you out. Boy, this is a long video. I was I was reviewing the soap and talking about that. Oh, and then I gave you kind of a this had some some game changer OC type information. That's uh, one of the reasons for the length. Uh, just remind you that if there's anybody still watching, uh, there is a playback speed option on YouTube. Hit that little gear kind of at the bottom of the video and then look for speed or playback or something like that and click on that and you'll be able to choose like one and a half, 1.25. One and a half, you might have trouble understanding me because I'm going to be moving so fast. Uh, but it'll move along the, the show pretty quickly. Uh, one to five, one and a quarter speed is, is going to go just a little faster than regular speed, but you should be able to understand most of what I say so that you could switch the speed back to normal uh, if you want to tune in for something specifically. So those are a couple of ways you can move through any YouTube video uh, without having to spend quite as much time listening to it. All right, now. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. You take care and good night.